writing this book, uh, Follow the uh, Arrow, Feng Shui, Your Life, was a very interesting journey for all of us friends. The fact that she's written this book and basically a lot of myths concerning uh, Feng Shui have been broken by her and we're very proud of uh, you for yeah, that. Thank you. Uh, I'll introduce this book, Quack. This book was inspired by a duck. Actually make that two ducks. But they weren't sitting side by side in a pond, you know, in the summer sunshine. No. These particular ducks played a starring role in a common misconception about the ancient Chinese practice of feng shui, pronounced feng shui. Namely, if I put mandarin ducks in my bedroom, will it improve my chances of finding true love? I think most of us have these issues in our life. We have the well, ducks also. <laughs> and the ducks, we don't know where to put them. Well, the short answer is no. Ducks are cute. Ducks are decorative. Ducks are great if you want to distract the neighbor's kid so that she doesn't go near your off-white sofa. But ducks don't really help you better your relationship or help you find your soulmate. That, I hate to say, is just quack. But it was these ducks and the quack around feng shui that made me put pen to paper. To be a practitioner of classical feng shui is to spend considerable time undergoing what popular culture has made well popular. And it's not anyone's fault. Feng shui has been commercialized over time and become associated with objects like statues of doves and turtles, coins and crystals, which are nothing but Chinese good luck items. Chinese good luck items. As a result, most people think feng shui is about using specific items. Websites and you know, stores all over the world further uh, propagate this myth by selling these objects as cures. But while using these items as an integral part of Chinese culture, it is not a feng shui cure. In India, it would be about the same as hanging a, law, a picture of Lord Ganesha or a goddess Lakshmi in your home. Feng Shui is an ancient science that has been practiced for more than 3,500 3, years. years. But somewhere along the way, this Chinese system has been mauled by Chinese whispers. Literally Chinese whispers. This respected discipline has begun to be associated with just lucky charms and nothing more. Its gleaming heritage has been reduced to a shelf at a department store, stuffed to the grills with those laughing Buddhas and all those half-truths. It has begun to represent at once everything and nothing, confusing frogs with fate and doves with destiny. I will never forget my biggest feng shui mistake. The year 1999 wasn't a good one for me either personally or professionally. I had given up working in my father's business after I got married and I had no career to speak of. The one bright spot in my life at that time was my beautiful three-year-old son who was the center of my universe. I started thinking of ways to make it possible to have the life I had always dreamt of. It was then that I came across an article about feng shui. It talked about how by rearranging certain objects and by introducing certain elements in your living space, it was possible to change your course of life. I had nothing to lose. My initial foray into the science was marked by the same misconceptions that I seek to clear by writing this book. I bought crystals and the Chinese good luck items, confusing them with feng shui elements. I mistakenly deflected negative energy or qi into my innocent neighbor's house because I was working from books that were full of misinterpretations, half-truths or conflicting information. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. One particular tip really stood out in my mind. When fish dies in a fish tank, it means that they have absorbed something negative that would have happened to you. I used to look over uneasily at my fish, hoping they would survive the summer. But I later learned that negative energies have nothing to do with your fish dying. I, it simply means you aren't looking after your fish. Things came to a head when I tried this particular one, placing a mirror behind the cooking stove, which uh, apparently guaranteed the doubling of wealth because it visually doubled your food. I still can't forget that week. 
I had dreadful fights with my husband, painful, fierce arguments, and then I figured it out. Putting the mirror behind the stove didn't just double the food, it also doubled the fire. You would think that that would be enough for me to pack up my feng shui books and decrystal my house, but I didn't lose faith in this science. I just got onto a plane to Malaysia and took a formal course in authentic classical feng shui under the tutelage of Grandmaster Yap Cheng Hai. I knew that there was more to this science than it was letting me see. It is a decision I never regretted. This book has been written to save feng shui from the clutches of misinterpretation and unnecessary mystique. It has been written to restore its respect, to underscore its power, to remind you that it's user-friendly and not as complex as it looks. It has also been written to impress upon you that you can, for most part, ignore that shelf at the department store. Keep walking. Most feng shui cures are found within the four corners of your home. In many cases, letting vibrant and positive energies flow through your house could just be a matter of rearranging or making use of what you already have. If you are familiar with this science or have brought books on this subject before, maybe the reason you are buying this book, which I think all of you should have, is because you feel, like once I did, that there is more to a science than you are able to comprehend. And you would be right. This book contains secrets that many feng shui experts have not been able or have not been willing to part with. Because the big fat secret to feng shui is about knowing what the cure is. It's, it's not about knowing what the cure is. It is about knowing how to apply it. Done right? Feng Shui can bring you harmony, balance, power and success. Misunderstood or ignored, it can hold you back an invisible leash that won't let you soar. Feng Shui has been consistently proven to change the course of your life by re removing obstacles, hindering your romantic, professional or financial destiny. And that is not quack. Thing about the secret of... Um uh, so what is the secret of, of, right. of, of this whole... Uh, the book. Uh, yes, of the book and of this entire science. Actually, really, yeah. Like, I mean, where, this where book, basically, what I've tried to do is, of course, put all my 13 years of knowledge into it. I've tried to make it a very easy do-it-yourself guide. Mm -hmm. I've laid down the principles, the concepts in a very easy way. And then I've introduced the schools of Feng Shui, which explains externally what you need to do, what you need to observe, and interna internally, which school you need to follow. There is one school which is known as Eight Mansion. Even if you can't do anything about that flyover which is right outside your window, you can actually just touch it. It's so close to your house. What cure can you put for that? I have mentioned what that also. What is to you? I want to know. What is that... Flyover, the flyover doing to you where it when it's right in front of your house because it is cutting the chi feng shui is all about energy the energy has to be slow it has to be meandering mm. only then is it positive mm. it's like you have a t junction in front of your building a t junction is when a road comes right into mm. your building so we don't want that energy coming oh. right into your building it is definitely going to be harmful Really? Harmful to the health of the people. You can have cases. Legal, why, legal why is that? Has, that's why. Because, because energy, energy is coming very fast. So basically, basically what you are trying no. to say is Feng Shui is uh, channalizing the energy. I mean, what is Qi exactly? Can no, you just explain yeah. what is Qi? Qi, what is that? that? Qi is yeah. energy. Look now, I just want you to go through the lesson of Qi. Just one or two pages we want so that they understand exactly what Qi is about. Yeah. I absolutely love the, this, you know, I, I so, know this tongue and cheek humor, you know, associated with Feng Shui normally is such a, mm -hmm. such a drive or such a serious subject. Because love the way Qi, you've tried to Qi is a very a difficult thing to explain, mm -hmm. but okay. simple, once you understand Qi, Feng Shui yes, is all so. about Qi. Okay. Um, the title uh, of this topic is 
smile, say G. Smile, say G. If you really think about it, there is something that breathes life into everything. That makes trees vibrant. That makes flowers flower. That makes gravity gravitate. If you really think about it, there's something that gives you an essence, a soul, an identity to everything. If you really think about it, there's some inner force that brings vitality to cities, parks, animals, human beings, and every big or little thing you see around you. In Chinese philosophy, this something is called qi. Qi, pronounced qi. It can also be spelled as qi, but still pronounced as qi. <laughs> it has been defined in classical uh, feng shui as the dragon's cosmic breath, an inner vitality that permeates all forms of living and non-living objects. It is not a concept exclusive to the Chinese. In India, the equivalent of qi is prana, which means life energy in Sanskrit. Qi is a concept that has survived for thousands of years. There is actually no way to conclusively prove the presence of qi. There's no way you can quantify or measure it. It reminds me of this riddle that we used to find hilarious in school. Uh, what is everywhere, is never seen, is only felt. Which is it? What is it? Give up. The answer is God. I went to a convent school. The riddles they asked you. Yes. Qi is like this big cosmic riddle. It's not just in objects or within living beings, but it's also is the energy around you. It's the feeling you get about a space when you walk into a room. You know, why dark alleys scare you? Or why you get that tight, boxed-in feeling when the ceiling is a little too low? You know, e even though you have enough space to move around, you can't see chi. But you can feel its effects. So chi exists everywhere. But how do you know that it is real? Because when you see feng shui in uh, physical spaces like bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, etc., it will produce unmistakably positive changes in your life. Feng shui is essentially the practice of introducing objects or elements that enhance, redirect, or mitigate the effects of qi. In other words, feng shui has to physically block qi to protect you from its negative effects. That's what she is about. Uh, Lupna, you know, uh, everyone, the reason behind that persistent headache of yours or migraines of yours is one of the reasons why mm -hmm. I get terrible feng shui, migraines. Feng shui so is not right. Mm -hmm. it, it is behind those. It, probably you have an overhead exposed beam somewhere in your house mm -hmm. or somewhere in the office where you're sitting. Also, did you know the reason behind a bad relationship? It could be the mirror in your bedroom, which is reflecting your bed. But All interestingly, I must uh, you know, make this point here, Dimple. You know what? Uh, I, I, I completely followed this book, you know, and I said, okay, let me just debunk all these myths that I'm living around with and, you know, let me just follow the arrow, you know, and follow her. And I tried to do this and uh, believe me, it was very interesting that you know, Nikhil ke aai ke, there were loads of things and it is just not ke I have to buy some things, you know, put them in a particular place and do all that. Um, I'm coming to that. Yeah, you know, you just have to just, because just rearrange a few things Pung and you're done. It's all about elements. There Correct. are five elements. One is wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Once you, you obviously have wooden furniture in your house. You can just put water in a bowl and you get an, another element. You have metal. Metal as in even any artifact of metal in the house can be replaced. Or if your son is gymming, you have those gym weights. That is also considered metal. And you have earth. Earth, of course, is ceramic. We all have ceramics. So we and uh, the fire, you can always put red color, a candle. That's all fire. So we have all these items. Once we place them in their right. proper direction, these items also have their directions or the corners of the house, which I have explained in the book. Again, and in this I must add to that, you know, you've given these two uh, templates, you know, those, those yes, diagrams. the tools. Uh, the tools. I have uh, they're very interesting. Do you have them here with you? No, uh, I don't. They're, they're very interesting plastic sheets. Normally, I'm getting that feng shui ke saath mein wo, wo so they, yeah, yeah, they don't fall off. Yeah. I, uh, what are those? You know, uh, Lopna, this hmm. book when hmm. I was yeah. writing, huh. I 
rewound myself 13 years back and I said what could be helpful to everyone when they read it. Correct. So I made it as easy as possible. All they need to do is place it on the plan of their house, place that template which I've given and you get all the directions and all the elements, elements. where they need to be placed. Tell me, uh, Dimple, there's another fear which all of us had have and especially me, is that the minute you feel that somebody comes into your house and tells you that this, 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 this thing needs to be changed, that thing needs to be changed, so many a times say, oh God, how much, how much of my stuff will I have to break down? Will I have to change the entrance of a door? Yes. Will I have to rework my window? Will I have to... So how much of that really... No, I tell you, this book gave me... Do. This was yeah, a relief I, that this book gave yes, me, very know, sorry, frankly. Sorry, <laughs> this is, this is, so because it's, it's, it's a sphere. Correct. That if somebody Correct. comes and tells you that you have to do your whole house down to No, that's not something that you want to do. Correct. That's you what know? is explained so, in yeah. this book. Mm. And that is why I call Feng Shui, which is a, such a user-friendly science. Suppose your bed is not in the right direction. I have told in this book, all you need to do is just... Put shift your pillow yourself. on the other <laughs> side. Shift yourself. And to the other if side. still you don't yeah. get a good direction, your good direction, which is again mentioned in the eight mansion school, mm -hmm. then you don't sleep on the bed. You take a nice mattress, put it on the floor, and just tilt sleep it and get your best direction. Mm -hmm. Because that school is so potent, it can actually change your life. Same way for the gas. Yeah, we, yeah, you know, once all, we all have these hobs we, that are built in yes. and you have cylinders under that so it's very difficult to change. You cannot change it. All yeah. I tell my, my clients, <laughs> there are a few of them sitting out here also, is get an uh, induction cooktop or if you're a rice eater, just get a rice, rice top, cooker. Rice cooker. Okay. And where the on off switches, make it face your best, best direction. Okay. Now why? Why is the kitchen the so important? Why, why is the kitchen so important? No, even in best directions. Best directions is a very interesting thing. You say that our best direction is no, south, south or north, yeah. north or something. It's not the same for everyone. It's very interesting thing that the directions can be chosen by you. In the sense that you may have a best direction. But also, if, if, uh, if you, you know, according to, yeah, correct. Because if you can the best direction, you can enhance the best direction. So you can get to the next best direction. Yeah. And then enhance that. Also, this also gives you the facility where, uh, if you remember, like, if I need to get uh, the, uh, you know, the health corner or the, rom yeah, the romance are, corner. Uh, so those can be enhanced according are, to these, you, these. Uh, no, they're there telling us there are the four, yeah. four priorities. Yeah, I'll come yeah. to that. These four directions are according to your four priorities in life. Of course, a young, uh, young man, uh, maybe between 25 and 30, he wants everything in life. He wants health, he wants wealth, he wants romance, he wants peace. Yeah, yeah. So the first best direction is for him. If not, then the second one. The second one definitely is for health. Somebody who is ailing all the time, who has health problems, should use the second direction. Then third one. So many of my clients come and say, my daughter is not getting married. I, all the directions, I place her bed in the uh, marriage corner, I, I, in the direction, I place the gas facing her marriage direction, I make sure at work when she's sitting, she's facing her marriage direction. And in fact, I have uh, discussed a case study also in this of my client. Uh, it was a Parsi girl. Did and she finally get married? Yes, <laughs> within six months. <laughs> and, Thank a you. Shui, and a Feng Shui I did. And is the marriage lasting? Yes. <laughs> the Feng Shui I did was exactly of this much space. You know, it was at the Parsi uh, hostel in Worli. You're close by only. They have a Parsi hotel. This much space. One side is her roommate and she told me only one side. I said, look, on the email I will give you the direction. She said, no, you have to come. I said, wow, that's a challenge. So that is one of the case studies which I have discussed. But she got Parsi book. married. And <laughs> Parsi marriage is very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> because she wanted a Parsi guy. And you know, the Parsi community is so lowly yeah. populated. There's hardly any population. Yeah. <laughs> and it's no. still lasting. She should thank you for that much. But more. tell me, yeah. tell me seriously no, she, something. One this, second, I'm this, just interrupting. Yeah. She, wo she was asking me about the gas. Yes. Now, why is the kitchen right. so important? Yeah. Again, the kitchen is the food which is cooked is from where we get the energy. So the the cooktop or the your gas has to face your good direction. From where it is putting in the people in the house, then how do you? That's work what on I do. Direction. Then definitely one hob is there. Mm. 
and another so four small, people living in their directions no, are different. four people would be definitely two could be East Group and two could oh. be West Group. So definitely it will again be two directions. two directions. So all you need is one extra uh, rice cooker. You know, yeah, this is the best thing about this book because you so know it has it has. But if there are two people these, with yeah. different directions, yeah, then, then what do you do? That's what. One, you so already you have, have a gas. Two things. Okay. One, one induction and one gas. gas, which is facing one of their best directions. And what if it's not? No, it has to. No, oh, it has to. Because there is a east group person okay. and there is a west group person. Oh, okay. so one, so will, one be, will be the, in the right place. And yeah, one out of four directions, be. one definitely oh, would be his uh, oh. one of the best directions. Sorry. Yeah. I just got intrigued. I want to know one of your stories where after you learned. Eventually, I came back, and you were trying to do different things. That no, 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 no. That was before I learned. Okay. That was when I was just picking up from the shelves the books. Right. You know, they said, "Okay, keep this and keep a mirror." Like what we probably end up doing. What changed in your relationship in your life? Like what, what do you like? What uh, definitely, it's been 13 years, and Lubna knows me here, and there are mm -hmm. uh, my friends out here who know me since past so many years. And uh, I guess they can be better judges of what change they have seen in me. Probably Lubna can say, or <laughs> Jyoti, uh, she's a friend of mine who knows, who goes back uh, a lot of, uh, almost 30 years. And she can tell me the change uh, from 2000 till now. And of course, with my people around me, what change it has, what have you seen, Jo? I think uh, since you started practicing, uh, you know, Feng Shui, I, I, your life itself has transformed. Uh, you know, there was a period, as you said, when you were really struggling to find direction and something to do, uh, you know, with yourself and with your life, having led such a, you know. Uh, yeah, there was no mental peace. My relationship was, was going that to you. Yeah, my relationship was point. going haywire. I didn't have peace of mind. I didn't know what career to do. I was not a person who was always sitting at home. It was not like that. I was just, uh, I was miserable actually. I, uh, because what happened now that I go back and see is before marriage, I had all my good directions. Mm -hmm. And after marriage, probably it was not the marriage or the relationship. It was just the feng shui was not right. And that is why I was not in peace with myself. The energy and was not right. Energy was not right. As soon as I started learning feng shui, obviously first I experimented it on myself. And when I actually started using it for myself, slowly but surely, I saw the changes. And even now, my friends come up to me and say, God, you're so relaxed, you're so peaceful, how come? I'm like, I'm, I guess I'm rightly feng shui. <laughs> you know, it's... Sorry, there's no contradiction to what you just said, yeah. like, like somebody who lives on a crossroad, like this building is on a whatever... T junction. junction. Yeah. So people who actually live there, will they never succeed in life or have a great relationship? Or no, it's not about I mean, that. Is there something like we all say it's karma, like life has whatever, you know, yeah, good deeds and bad deeds mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Or maybe that Parsi girl was meant to marry at 50. That is, that is an excellent, that, that is an excellent thinking, question which you have asked. And I just want her to read something and you will get your answers. You know the fear of, oh my god, if I'm not done this, maybe my relationship will not excel or maybe mm. my life will not go in a more smoother mm. way. I, I the want superstition, to, I think. It's probably yeah, the superstition, superstition attached. Also, I want to answer yeah. the question. Of, of, I said that. Yeah. That are you going to, how, how are we going to govern our lives? Yeah. Which means if you know that this time is not a good time to step out of the house, so what am I going to do? Keep sitting and in my what house? If you didn't know about this, and this time is not good and you just You would have probably you know, gone ahead. You know, in our life, there are three lucks. And I just want her to read that and then I will explain it. It's just a very short uh, one page. Tien de re. Tien de re. These are the three. Three lucks. Lucks. In a hospital, on a train, in a car, in a hut, underwater, in the air, three weeks early, two weeks late, by a midwife, by a doctor, by a passerby. There is a baby being delivered almost every second of every day across the world. But what makes two babies born at the same time lead such different lives? Of two babies born under the same stars, 
at exactly the same time, why does one end up becoming a millionaire while the other can barely make ends meet? Genetic engineers would probably attribute this difference to a strand in the DNA that makes one baby more genetically predisposed to succeed. Social scientists may put it down to environmental or socio-cultural factors that inhibit or boost prosperity. Armchair philosophers would probably just shrug and tweet about it. Hash, that's life. But Chinese philosophy has an altogether different answer. The Chinese believe that your luck is a child of three parents. It is influenced by a trinity of cosmic forces or Tian, De and Ren. In other words, there are three factors that, that determine what happens in your life. For example, whether you stay married or get divorced or whether you make millions or are just able to make bail is due to your Tian, De and Ren. And of this trinity of forces, two are in your hands. Tian. Tian or Tian is heaven luck or the luck that you were born with. It is your destiny, your karma, your kundli. This includes where you were born. That is the family you were born into, the siblings you have, whether you were born Indian or American or Chinese, rich or poor, boy or girl, black or white. It is the first pillar of the Trinity. It is also something that you cannot change. Day is earth luck or feng shui luck. This is luck that, make, that you make by applying the principles of feng shui. Day brings opportunities your way thereby enhancing your chances of success. It also boosts your life condition, creating wealth, health and peace. This is the second pillar of the Trinity. Ren, R-E-N. Ren or mankind luck is the luck you accumulate through your own actions and efforts. It's the luck you create for yourself by being a good, hard-working human being. It is also called grandma luck because it's based on what your grandmother told you. What goes around comes around. This is the third pillar of the Trinity. So, can Feng Shui completely change the life you were destined to live? No. Can it reverse your Tian? That is your heaven luck? No. When the speeding train that is destiny comes barreling down the tracks, can Feng Shui make it screech to a halt? No. But Day and Ren, that is your earth luck and your mankind luck, they ensure that you maximize your potential. Yes. Can Day and Ren ensure that you are able to counter all the negative forces in your TN as much as is possible? Yes. Can what you do on earth take the hell out of your heaven? Hell yes. So, to answer your question, what does feng shui do? Feng shui reduces the impact. If your vazi, as in your chart, you know, I do Chinese astrology, in which I can, it's like a Hindi, uh, Hindu astrology chart. I see that first. And I see that, yes, you are going through a bad period. And you're probably going to meet an accident. But vazi is the diagnosis. When you go to a doctor, he will say, okay, you will have this, this problem. What is the prescription? The prescription is feng shui. I come and do your feng shui and definitely you will have an accident. But instead of a car accident, you will probably have a minor fall, a sprain. So feng shui helps you to just Minimum. reduce the impact. And that is why I like to see the bazi. Bazi I have not included in the book. Because Bazi is a Chinese like astrology. I, said, I thought it was a film. Bazi is... <laughs> Bazi and I have to correct you yet again. <laughs> yeah, you have to correct Bazi is... Read it again. <laughs> it's a branch of Chinese astrology which enables a practitioner to read a person's tian or destiny, the karma, the kundli. For instance, when I read my client's Bazi charts, I can immediately tell if they are destined to be married or whether there is some significant health issue looming. 
For a chart, I also know the general uh, characteristics of someone's nature and what struggles they were currently going through in their lives. With the help of Feng Shui and their, and their own resolve, I have seen clients really change things for themselves, not only taking the bite out of potential catastrophes, but also enhancing a good phase in their Bazi charts, creating stupendous victories out of what were initially just minor gain, gains. In the grand scheme of things, Bazi is the diagnosis, Feng Shui is the prescription. I just wanted to ask you one thing that uh, that means we'll have to like how we have our own Hindu like a Yeah, it's the, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Is a Chinese thing to do no, Hindu. that is if you are going to consult a practitioner or go Yeah, but without that, how would you do your Feng Shui? Like Sorry? How, how would you do your... Without that idea, you yeah. should. You need an expert. You may just do the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We yeah. need to go to a proper... Uh, to a, without, yeah. yes. Without Bazi, you can't. But what I've tried to tell in this book is, even if you don't know your Bazi, you just do it. So unknowingly, you are going to reduce the impact by having the right Feng Shui. So uh, Bazi and Feng Shui is correlated because Bazi is... Well, Bazi is just because I see the chart. Bazi yeah. is like your Janam Patri in the astrology. The age or increase the good and the Yes, like yes. Yeah. Feng Shui is one of the things. There's so many other list of things like Vastu, Sash, Vastu Shastra. Uh, people wear gems on their fingers. Right. So what does a person follow? I mean, does mm -hmm. he do everything? I mean, mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. It's a good question because last 13 years, I haven't seen here nor there. I don't know anything. I don't know about Vastu. I don't know about numerology. I don't know about gems. I don't know anything. Because this science is what attracted me towards it. And this and science works has worked for me. Yeah, works so for anything which works for you. So but be, for, basically, but follow it passionately. But, follow but there's a very thing interesting thing. You know, what we're talking about astrology and Reiki and this and that. They, they are occult sciences. If you believe in them, yeah, they work for you. Like anything for that matter in this universe, if I you believe in them, they work for you. Amazingly, uh, Feng Shui is a proven science. Yeah. If you, if you read this book, you, what you'll understand is it has, you know, it has its physics, chemistry, maths and, you know, it has its everything in place. You see, so you, you can't just negate it or you can't just say, ke, yaar ye, ye aisa hota hai. today in India, our problem with Feng Shui is that we live with all these myths and all the wrong things that, no, uh, that we what consider the uh, want it's supposed to be uh, you know, chai, the Feng Shui. This is not the Feng Shui that we, uh, that, uh, this that is. This is classical Feng Shui. You know, th th that's, those are parts, elements, but they have to be seen in totality and, and used in, in, a, in, in, a, in a manner that is, Conducive correctly. to us. And also correctly. You see, than, correctly, correctly. A lot of myths and you need an expert. That need if to you, be dispelled. And I seriously tell you if, you, if you don't even have an expert, if you have these things, she's simplified a lot of things. She's, she's given us a lot of concepts. All, you know, the, uh, if, if anybody over here has read or knows anything about feng shui or has read feng shui books for a point, uh, at some point of time or whatever, the youngsters, I'm sure they do. Do they read? Do you all <laughs> read? <laughs> <laughs> But seriously. Maybe they'll go online and check it out. Uh, yes, yeah. that's much easier. Yeah, yeah. Google but data. On, online, they will, <laughs> online they will, they, even online Google will say, ye rakh do, it is a, yeah, rakh yeah, actually do. it's a bottomless It is way. wrong. Yes. Yeah. It, it is, is so wrong. Because people, when I go to my clients, acha, uh, humko kya kharidna, aap what items lai hai? I like, excuse me, koi items nahi hai. Bas easy. mein feng shui karungi aapka. Correct. Yeah, right. <laughs> Easy, ye bade easy way out hai, jo aajkal jo hamari generation chal rahi hai, bade easy way out, quick solutions ki jo usme hai na, ye usi hoard ka ek ye chakkar hai, jo you know, bahut saare logon ne is baat ka fayda uthaya, I feel. But if you read this book, it is, it is, you know, definitely demystifying a lot of things that we are doing wrong. Even if you don't believe in feng shui, it is, it's a very interesting read because at the end of the, end of the day, I have, I really felt that I am reading, you know, a kind of a fiction, you know. Which I can really apply in my real life. You know, it's all you about know, me. Look, now there was this thing which I wanted to put into the book, but I couldn't because there wasn't enough space. You know, how many of you all know that even cities are feng shui? Yeah. Cities like Hong Kong and cities like Singapore. You know, in the early can 80s. Can quickly do it to Bombay? It may fix a whole lot of our problems. We need to. I'll just tell you. There's so in many the, problems that in have the, to be In fixed. the early 80s, Mr. Lee who was then the Prime Minister of uh, Singapore, 
now he the economy was going through a bad time that was when the mtr was being built mm -hmm. so there was a lot of digging obviously there was a lot of energy oh, which was yeah. being shaken up now mr lee being a believer of feng shui he had a master whom he used to consult so he went to one of the great masters of feng shui and he said what do i do for my country so the master said okay these are the things which i'm going to tell you the first thing he said was he wanted a coin now obviously he couldn't go to each one's house to change the directions so he had to use some uh, common, th things. common things which everyone would have it. so one of the things was you know how many of uh, the coin which had an <coughs> octagonal shape now that octagonal shape has a lot of powers so he said first you introduce that one dollar coin which has a octagonal shape and everyone would have it so once he uh, introduced that then he said okay now what so he said another thing which of course everyone would possess is the tax disc sticker again in an octagon shape so every car every family would possess it the other third thing which he suggested was to have a dragon on their 50 dollar bill note so he introduced that also so of course he introduced a lot of luck factors which did work for the country currently they are in a mess but i think they need to reintroduce these yes, things yes because i think mr lee is not there He's and not some new person is there who again doesn't believe in yeah. function yes, so uh, basically it's all the belief it is that just not a belief it. that we are talking but about yeah. it may sound alien to us ke badi chinese philosophy hai ji yahan par kya kar rahi hai ye hamare to kafi hamare waise hi itne sari problems ho rahi hai hum logon ko ye believe kar rahe hain ya nahi believe kar rahe hain basically it's the faith it's the faith and it has and there are many examples to show that this there have been changes with whatever she's teaching and with with this book definitely yeah. there it's it's, it's it's become easier. simpler it's become easier it it's become a lot of myths correct Which and and to understand a lot of things but there's something very interesting happened you know i must share this with you dimple um uh, i had this friend of mine and uh, and they followed this book and wo she's given those templates and uske upar wo sab wo compass rakha aur phir wo wo rakha aur phir okay now this is the wood corner and this is this kind of corner and you know the metal and you know my water and everything has to be perfectly balanced now what she does is when you follow the arrow there is one for the whole house then there is one for your separate each room. rooms each room each room now wo chalo hall ka to ho gaya because usme to koi rehta nahi hai koi sota nahi hai to you know wo to bilkul usko इधर से निकाल दो उधर से लगा दो तो वो सारा ठीक हो गया उसके बाद बेडरूम में गए हाय ये तो वॉडरूम तो ऐसे लगे हुए अच्छा अमेजिंगली जो जो घर था इट वॉज डायग्नल एंड्स पे तो मतलब यू कुडन गेट वन होल नॉर्थ यू कुडन गेट वन होल साउथ यू कुडन गेट ऑल ऑफ देम सो फाइनली वन ऑफ द बेडरूम द मेन बेडरूम वॉज अ बिट ऑफ नॉर्थ you know a bit of south west you know and bit of everything and so the whole confusion galore <laughs> i was like ab kya hona chahiye you know ki ye kis kis angle par aur hamare hamare jo rooms hote hain wo kitne interesting hote hain chote acche bade bade to you know it was so difficult to place the bed finally ye hua ki you know cut the bed you know take it out <laughs> just oh place God. the mattresses in that odd position that you can see let me tell you it did work <laughs> yeah. thank god lobna oh my god <laughs> no yeah because what do you do you can't change the shape of the building you can't do <laughs> change the shape of the flat you can't do anything it's an angle and not most of the times i do have some uh, houses but which are at uh, a little at di diagonal but that's not a problem you place the template like that then so you have a template in the room yes so yes book. i have and given it yes all you have, have to find templates. out is stand in the center of your house find out one direction and then on your floor plan you place you the template you only need you will a, get you all need your a compass uh, that's it yeah do you think the common salt yes rock salt yes. rock salt rock salt or yes does it have any uh, effect as to yeah because every year the energy changes and we need to protect ourselves from especially the bad energies and activate the good energies because she she talked about salt now definitely everything must be done with the compass i want it in the proper directions the best area i will start with the best area which is south for this year okay now either you all can pick up the book if you all are an east group person the south is the most fantastic area 
So you have your head be, uh, behind your head while sleeping. If you have the south, that is excellent. If you are in the south room, it is excellent. So you need to use that area actively. In the north, the north is the second best area. So south is definitely good for your career, for promotions, for wealth, for everything. The north, you must place a water feature, a fountain, but a moving water feature, yeah? You can have a fish bowl with the pump or you can have a fountain. Even the southwest, you can have a fish bowl because these are the three fantastic uh, directions for this year. But make sure there is no water kept in the bedroom. In bedrooms, water fountains, water features are not allowed because they are very, very active and they will disturb your sleep. They are very yang to say. No, that's not uh, happening because a jar of water could mean a bottle of water. I was about and, to come to the bottle of water. <laughs> no, yeah. it's not going to make any difference. So we need enough Body. water. If running water, water is running water, water is flowing. A body. No, I mean, if you keep a bottle of water, it's not harmful. But I'm no saying to water. activate these stars in the north and southwest, you need to have good amount of water. Now, the northwest area, when you go back to your house, just check up where the northwest area is. If it is in any of the bedrooms, then you need to put a lot of metal in that northwest area because whoever is occupying that northwest area is not going to have good health or wealth this year. It is one of the worst areas. Both are important. Both are important. So we must fix that. We can yeah. Health and wealth. Health and wealth. Yeah. No, and obviously, I don't want any kind of renovation, banging in the northwest area. Same goes for the north also. No banging or renovation is allowed. If you do it before the 4th, you want to start a big renovation, it is fine, 4th of Feb. But after 4th of Feb, no, because you are going to activate some bad luck in your life. That is the northwest area. And when you spoke about salt, I don't know what you Remember still me? meant about salt. Normally they say you that you put the rock salt in the pocha. In the pocha, yeah, that is uh, to remove the yeah, negative the energy. Negative that is for you to yeah. feel good. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. So I, guess, I guess I guess when you remove the clutter out of your house, you'll automatically feel good. You'll increase your run luck, your karmas. That is the time when you really feel good. In the Northwest, now if you don't have heavy metal, as in, you know, gym equipment, dumbbells, you don't have that, then you put the salt water cure. Uh, the salt water cure, uh, roughly I will tell you, otherwise you all can email me and ask me, is uh, probably take a 10 kilo uh, barney, put about uh, 10 to 15 kilos of rock salt in it, that should be three quarters, one fourth should be water because when you fill water it will keep going down. And six weights, the bhajiwala weights, you get a hundred grams, on top of it, keep it open and keep it in the proper northwest. That is of metal and it is, salt is considered metal. So only the element metal can protect you from any bad stuff. So these are the areas where you need to be careful. Southeast. If you have a bedroom in the southeast and if you continue staying over there after the 4th of Feb, you will need to add a lot of red color over there because you will see that uh, everybody's suddenly people staying in that room have got very argumentative. There will be a lot of Fire. fights, mm -hmm. fights, quarrels, arguments. Where so you need red, red color. Red. Where, which area? Southeast. 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 East. Southeast. East. Southeast. East. Southeast. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> Even in the east, now a lot of our houses have a east main door. The east main door people will have some problem <laughs> sickness wise. Again, you place a lot of metal over there. Mm -hmm. Every year things will change. So every year you're going to keep like. Every year keep, keep coming you back have to keep changing yeah. these things only. And supposing I did it this year and then I forgot about it. This year went well. And then you, I my clients already. consult me every January. Before Absolutely. the but beginning of the, the new, I forgot next year, then you have to, 
then you then come you, to know. Then you face the consequences <laughs> and then it. you remember, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nimbala <laughs> told me on your phone. You Mujhe yaad a jayega. Oh, 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 and then you give me a call. Sorry? Not every now and then. It's a yearly feature. Yearly every January, Actually, you have to. Actually, in mythology also, they say varsh fal. Pura ek saal ka de sort of, you make it hmm. like hmm. a chart. Hmm. So, which is really what it is. So, really yeah. hoping that, you know, feng shui or, and this Helps book, all of your follow life. the arrow, feng shui, your life will help you in some way. Please read it. It's a yeah, lovely It definitely read. breaks so a lot of myths. Beautiful which is, read. Which is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.